these are the moon messages and I'm feeling uncertainty. Now, according to Vedic Astrology, the moon is in Taurus today uh, in the eighth house. And Taurus is ruled by Venus. And so emotionally, um, people may be um, engaging in the five senses, okay? Uh, food, um, could be shopping, um, uh, heavily focused on work or you know, being busy. Um, or it could be like laziness as well. Um, but I was mainly feeling just like uncertainty. Okay. So let's see. Now the moon is exalted in Taurus. But then it's in the eighth house, and the moon doesn't like to be in Scorpio or in the eighth house. Um, it's just too intense of an energy. And then, not to mention, you know, Taurus and the eighth house is ruler, Scorpio, Pluto. Uh, it's an opposition. So the moon today is it's kind of like, you know, feeling comfortable, <laughs> but then kind of not at the same time. You know, it's, um, it may just be an uncomfortable feeling that some people may be having at this time and they may kind of resort to, I don't know, maybe like hoarding or holding on to things, um, or just feeling the need to acquire more possessions, um, more money, um, shopping to kind of cope. Uh, the 12th house is a psychological house, um, and a lot of people, you know, go above and beyond to avoid this placement, this energy. Because uh, it's it's intense. It's, it's very intense, um, and it's very deep-rooted. Um, and so, you know, not a lot of people are equipped, called, chosen, um, or in, even interested um, to delve deep up, 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 up in there. So a lot of people, you know, at this time may be kind of resorting to, you know, pleasure um i mean which is i think what people do anyway but it's a little bit more intense today mainly food though it could just be like a food type of thing going on but anywho all right Also, too, with Taurus is a relationship-oriented sign. The moon it rules the emotions. You know, some people may be feeling in the mood to merge with another eighth house energy. So it just depends. Um, it really just depends. Like personally, I have my sun and my Mercury in the eighth house, so I'm I'm cool, you know. But other people may be kind of. <laughs> Fearful, scared, um, you know, not wanting to change, which is interesting because the moon changes, but Taurus doesn't, it's fixed. Um, I don't know, today may be a very confusing day for some. Not really knowing how to feel, um, not really wanting to feel, but may kind of like, you know, resort to the five senses to kind of uh, cope. Yeah, look at this. We have the, uh, excuse me, the world and we have the hermit. I don't know why I'm stuttering out of nowhere. All right. Major arcana is here. Um, but you see, this is about going within. It all starts with the hermit energy. Um, and then the hermit just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. Uh, you see that dark cave? That could, you know, be like the 12th house. It could even be the 8th house. It really just depends. But Regardless, this hermit is going deep, 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 up, up, up in there, right? The world is definitely, it could be a cycle starting, a cycle ending, or someone being in, someone in the middle of a said cycle. For me, this has to be at the middle or even the beginning. I don't get the end with this. 
So this is either the beginning or the middle that someone is kind of um, going through. So I guess, suppose I would name it, I guess, self-discovery in some way. Or avoiding it. It just depends. Yeah, avoiding it. We have the two of wands reversed. Yeah, this is to me avoidance. And here's the Nine of Pentacles, which is like peacock energy, which is it's a superficial, um, you know, given Venus energy. Okay, it's like being on the outside, <laughs> um, you know, looking the part, you know, things like that. But it's to me, this is giving me avoidant energy. It's it's just a refusal to go within, and um, it's a refusal to spend time with self. Uh, it's a refusal. Uh, to figure something out. Um, well, we have the devil here. And we have the page of pentacles. And you see how even the page of pentacles, she has her magnifying glass paper and she's like researching. That's usually what the page of pentacles can talk about. Um, but we have the devil energy. So the devil, you know, is the distraction. Is this the devil or the tower? No, this is the tower, excuse me. Is this the devil or the tower? No, because the devil is the other one. No, this is the tower, excuse me. So anytime that you're doing any type of shadow work or psychological, spiritual work, that essentially is a tower because the whole point is for whatever foundations, whatever beliefs um, that you have been conditioned to believe or to have, um, any type of way you've been living, what you've been doing, just anything, you know, mentally, psychologically, emotionally, like these things have to undergo some type of um, change. Metamorphosis, uh, challenge um, in order for growth, okay? But again, there's an avoidant energy. It's kind of like hear no evil, see no evil um, kind of vibe. It's it's um, out of sight, out of mind is what I will call this energy. It's pretty much that's what's going on. And um, it's I don't know what to say about it. I don't know what to say about it. What is the two of wands, the page of pentacles? Lovers reverse. It's um it's kinda of how I'm feeling with the astrology reading I just did. But that may be due to there's a lot of um water going on today as well and I don't really I have water placements and I just don't know how to speak when that comes up. I just don't. Um yeah, Neptune is in Pisces. Chiron's in Pisces, the North Node is in Pisces, Mars is even in Pisces. So these are like invitations, these are transits, these are placements that are inviting one into the subconscious realm. Um, And it looks like it's mainly to deal with relationships um, that may have failed or has caused some type of pain that has triggered one to kind of 
I don't know, maybe oppose relationships or kind of remain the same and how relationships are carried out. And I can see that with Mercury and Aries in the seventh house. So this is more of like Aries in the seventh house are opposites as well. Um, so, you know, this is kind of like mentally this thinking of self, um, especially in terms of relationships or, or trying to relate to other people. It's just kind of like a F everybody or F this person, F everything. It's about me and what I want and what's best for me. And a lot of that derives from, it's always going to derive from childhood. Um, it's always going to derive from the past, which the moon represents the past as well, amongst other things. Um, what we're comfortable with or what we are familiar with, whether we're comfortable with it or not, we're familiar with it. So it's just a lot of, you know, it's just a lot of people here who, I mean, energetically, just it just seems like there's no decision or there's no direction in 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 going inward. That's pretty much what it is. It's it's more so about being comfortable on the outside and, and looking the part, Nine of Pentacles energy. I, I don't get anyone really focus on um like changing or anything or growing or healing rather so it's like I don't really have anything to say about it and I could be picking up on other people they don't have anything to say about themselves needing to change it's kind of like a lot of people energetically don't feel like there's anything broken so there's nothing for them to fix you can't begin to fix what you don't think is broken and that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting oh no I'm sorry the moon is in Virgo excuse me whoa So with the moon in Virgo, this would make someone in the mood, right, to, you know, want to fix things, organize things, get things in order. Um, this is also very like a discriminatory energy. Um, it's, you know, Virgo energy likes to be controlled, likes things to be clean. But the moon is in the 12th house that Pisces rules, which is the opposite. There's a lot of opposition energy going on. The sun is in Taurus in the 8th house, excuse me. Um, so it's a lot of opposition, period. Um and when oppositions occur, yes, this is challenges. This is other people kind of reflecting back a mirror. Oppositions are basically mirrors. Um, but a lot of times people are oblivious, Neptune and Pisces, to the mirror. Um, it's always a lot of projection, but they are unable to see themselves or see themselves clearly. Um, so that's really what's going on here. And it's, 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 to say about that it's it's like calling to heal one's routine one's way of being one's way of being tradition one's one way you know <laughs> you know only doing one you know doing something one way not open to another way you know it's there's really nothing for me to say about it um and that's kind of sad you know i just it just it's it's not an alignment the lovers is a it's the lovers is the lovers but it's it's also about opposition as well the love it's a a man and a woman here that's opposition like in and of itself but that, that makes a whole with this even coming out reverse this is obviously not whole um Yeah, I keep getting four of pentacles in my readings today. So it's just a lot of people who are holding on. But I, I get it because the ego is in Taurus. So the ego is in a fixed sign. And then it's in a fixed house in the eighth house. It's in, it's just the ego does not, um, the ego can only do but so much. The ego is only willing to hear or to do but so much. It's not ever going to go as deep as the moon can go, right? It's the ego. The ego is external. It's outside of you. So, you know, as of today, it just seems like, People are not willing to clean up their psycho subconscious junk BS um, fears. It's they're just not willing to get up up in there. Again, Virgo energy is pure, um, or at least they try to be. You know, but Virgo energy is, is supposed to be pure. It likes to organize. It needs things to be in order. Um, it needs structure. It needs control. It needs to be clean. With that, in the twelfth house of chaos, um, messes. Um, I don't know addictions 
I don't know, it's, it's institutions, uh, it's the subconscious, it's, it's also like the womb, it's this past life energy, it's <laughs> drugs, um, sex is even in the 12th house as well. Uh, it's a lot that goes on in the 12th house, it's never ending. It's just a whole bunch, it's, it's, um, it's like equivalent to trying to clean the ocean. And, you know, a lot of fishes that are bottom feeders that clean the ocean floor, um, you know, they're dying and all these other things. So they're not, it's, you know, the ocean's not really oceaning. So at some point you don't clean the ocean or, you know, the fishes or whatever don't do their part. We're just going to have water that is tainted, is toxic and um, dirty. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm, you know, 90%. Um pescatarian so you know that wouldn't be good news to me i eat that's all i eat is really fish and um seafood so i wouldn't be able to eat and nurture moon energy myself you know because what's going on in the ocean is it's not it's not clean anymore or you know what i'm saying so if we think of this in those terms it's just a whole sea of people the collective the collective consciousness that is toxic it's dirty um and people are not doing their part to keep the consciousness collective, the collective consciousness clean. And so at some point, like I mentioned, I won't be able to continue my pescatarian diet. If I put this in terms of the collective, I'm not going to, I mean, I haven't been able to connect with the, co the collective for a long time, but most people, you know, are, it's, I mean, they're either going to continue in that toxic ocean of the collective or some people are just going to end up and, and they're going to end up dying, um, you know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. It just depends. But for those who are trying to awaken and those who have done the work, who are conscious and who are, you know, enlightened, you're not going to be able to tolerate eating out of the ocean anymore. You're not going to be able to tolerate being around the collective or being around people it's going to become unbearable um and you're gonna have to find another way in my case to find food right you're gonna have to find another way to nurture yourself it's um i don't know and i guess like kind of talking this out it kind of makes sense because lately i've been losing interest in a lot of things um a lot of things and that may be you know symbolic for what the little metaphor i'm trying to give now it's some of you who are enlightened and awakened it's it's going to get to a, another level you know where you're unable you're just going to lose interest in everything um everyone everything and there's levels to it like i said personally i've been on this wave for a long time <laughs> no pun intended I don't resonate with most people um, or the direction in which the universe is going. Um, I don't resonate. Um, so I'm very sheltered because there's there's very little that I can engage in. But the very few things that I have been able to engage in, I can't, it's, I'm losing interest in it. It's like, I can't eat, continue eating my fish out of the ocean because it's just getting bad. You know, it's, it's, um, for those who are enlightened, I'm pretty sure you feel me, but this is really what I'm getting with the, these are moon messages, and so I'm channeling the moon in Virgo in, in 12th house today. It's, um, it's just a, it's interesting because it's a, a conscious decision that people are making to avoid enlightening their unconscious i don't know it kind of makes me annoyed because like why am i here you know like in earth on earth like why am i here <laughs> like what's going on that's what i get with this makes me look at the um now that makes sense the astrology reading i just did i was feeling like heavy sexual energy and it was so hard for me to focus 
and now it makes even more sense because the lover's card was coming out with the temperance and i'm thinking that's relationship but i think that's the illusion that's going on in the collective people are mainly focused on relationships with another toxic person but they don't see themselves as toxic either so instead that lover's card with the temperance should have been the most high it should have been the divine it should be you becoming whole within self you know masculine feminine energy being balanced but instead I was getting distracted energetically by sexual relationship energy. And I believe with all of these in I don't want to say they're balanced, but it's imbalanced at the same time. But with all of these placements that I'm looking at, even with the astrology today, it's in the opposite it's like the opposite sign or in the opposite house <sighs> but that's the energy it's kind of like learning a balance but there is obviously an imbalance here and that's the whole point of the moon being in virgo today in the 12th house is to clean it up to balance it back out but no no it's not happening man what a time to be alive. Yeah, even Saturn is in the fifth house. And Saturn in the fifth house, it's like it makes... The fifth house is about play. Saturn is about seriousness. So this is kind of like... Everything in that fifth house with Saturn in the fifth house, it's, it's about kind of acting it with intention. But with Saturn being saturn and how that's difficult saturn represents difficulties it's difficult for the collective to move and act and live with intention and to you know saturn's in aquarius um uh, the part of fortune is in aquarius in the fifth house as well so they're conjunct it's it's kind of like people are unable to be indifferent to play and drama and I don't know creativity but mainly like sex type of creativity and no wonder I'm feeling emotionally uncertainty it's like uncertainty for the future star card hmm. no judgment or shade this is just what I'm picking up on energetically uh, there's no need to get triggered hot and bothered or mad I'm just picking up on the energy It's giving doom and gloom. And it's like, what's that quote? You can only change, no. To change the world, you have to, you can only change, no. If you want to change the world, change, you can only change your backyard, whatever that quote is. It's like a lot of people are refusing to clean up their backyard. So we have the King of Pentacles coming out, which is Taurus energy. And then we have judgment here. And here's the High Priestess. So, you know, the High Priestess knows, you know, and I'm feeling like that doom and gloom for the future. And then just, you know, a lot of people who, you know, refuse to kind of make changes or this could be an indication of you know slow to change but it's um it's more you know materialistic and uh external and that's the future instead of like i said like changing the backyard like changing your own backyard or something it's on um Can be an indication of a tower coming down um, due to judgment because of an unwillingness to make the said changes who knows right
So it says your commitment is being tested. First quarter moon energy. So remember the world card came out and I was like, this is either the beginning or the middle. I don't see this as an ending. So the first quarter moon is that's the first quarter after a full moon, um, after, you know, one releases energy and things are being released or supposed to be the first quarter is it's kind of like this is right after that. Right. So your commitment is being tested. Um, and for me, that kind of, you know, I interpret that as commitment to the divine is being tested. Commitment to yourself, commitment to your purpose, commitment to God, commitment to a higher power, commitment to your ancestors. Um, and commitment in astrology is always Saturn. All right, so. Mm. Those of you who are on the enlightened side, you know, to me, this is giving like a need, I guess, to go deeper into your cave. <laughs> you know, you know, Moon and Virgo told house today, it's, it's a need to go deeper into your cave. This is pulling these for laughs and giggles and I got detective, goddess, and poet. So the de detective light attribute is great powers of observation and intuition, desire to seek out truth. Goddess is giving the feminine expressed through wisdom, nature, life force, and sensuality. And poet is giving, expressing, um, expresses soul insight in symbolic language. So like I said, it's it's giving, I mean, this could also be, you know, for my fellows, you know, God energy. We got God and goddess, but it's, um, like I said, with the detective energy, it's, that's going deeper into this cave. It's, that's kind of giving me, um, well, it is Scorpio energy with the detectiveness. Um, and when you observe that's exactly what it is you're observing you're not engaging so you know you'll know where you're at with it with this message or maybe you might be lost not knowing what i'm saying um but that in and of itself should tell you where you're at with life but it's um oh man i just got like sad <laughs> The gambler is at the bottom, which deals with the fifth house. And the gambler, light attribute is willingness to follow intuition even when others doubt you. Shadow attribute is relying on luck rather than hard work. Eyes on my... Priestess energy also stays to, you know, herself. Her energy is uh, isolated. So that is in alignment again with, you know, not engaging with others, unfortunately. What is the uh, tower, the world, and the high, I'm sorry, and the hermit.
Yeah. Hangman. Reverse. So this has to be what's going on outside of the cave. Towers are hidden outside of the cave. <laughs> because there's just no way you can be inside the in the cave and you're not enlightened or you know seeking enlightenment. So this tower has to be applied to those who are not making any moves to you know. Yeah, here's the two of swords and justice has come out reverse. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> 